Welcome to Soul Share, a conversation focused on love, intimacy, vulnerability, and emotional intelligence. This is a different kind of relationship dialogue for those who want to make the shift from the ego-driven to more intimate, spirit-nurturing partnerships that satisfy, because that's what black love is. Black love is powerful. Black love is soulful. Black love is a love that you can feel. Give thanks. Intimacy is what we're ultimately on a search and on a quest for. Well, I, I imagine that to be. Do you, do you think for most men that intimacy is a big, is a big thing? Or are they running from that because that puts them in too much of a vulnerable space? Well, they don't even know. I mean, it depends on what they think intimacy is. So you say most men, kind of like what we said before, a lot of times they, they're not looking for that, you know? But if if they find somebody that they think is compatible or mm-hmm. that they might, that they can live the rest of their lives with, like that's what marriage is about, right? We're going to spend the rest of our lives together, mm-hmm. you know? And so... I'm assuming if we're gonna spend the rest of our lives together, that there's gotta be some sort of in- intimacy there, right? Just, we, we gotta have something. I mean, we're, we're, we're agreeing that we're gonna spend our lives together. At some point, we hope that there's a, there's an intimate moment, mm-hmm. you know, or at least, you know, what we think is intimate, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I was telling my cousin one day, she said, how do you know you find the right woman? I said, wow, how do you know when you find the right woman? I said, well, I said, it's funny for men because we know what we like. So, you know, we'll try our pot here and there and everything. And I said that a lot of times we unfair because we might even make the women feel like it's about them. And we know that it's not going to be about them because we already know what we like. You know, we already know what our bottom line is. And most of the time we already got our bottom line. And everything else is just something that we just trying to sample. So you I have said, to explain that. Well, I mean, she said, how do you know when you find a good woman? You can't really know if the woman is good, really. Like, ultimately, you can only know if she's good at, at some sort of end, right? Like, if I spent my life with you, right, mm-hmm. and I'm dying, I can tell you if you was a good woman to me, right? Mm-hmm. Or if you were a bad woman to me. I can't tell you if we've been together for 10 years. I can, I can say that, that, that I've experienced goodness from you. Okay. So at this point, she seems like a good woman. Okay. So it's not, the question almost seems like an like an ultimate question. How do you know when you find a good woman? And I know what she meant. Okay. Like, how do I know when I find the right person is probably what she meant. Mm-hmm. The right woman for me. And most of the time, you already, we know what's right for us. You know what I'm saying? And if we, a lot of times what will happen is, you know, in knowing what's right for you. Like, you probably, are, it's already in the locker what we know is for us. Everything else really is just playing around. You know, or sometimes it depends on what it is. Like, you might like something in one woman and like something in another woman. So, it becomes difficult to say if she, you could be right for one reason, she's right for another. And I mean, it could be the same for women. You know, he's right for a reason and he's right for another reason. So, why do you have to choose? What do you, mean? you don't have to choose, but when you don't choose, it becomes an issue, right? Because I'm with her for her reason <laughs> and I'm with her for her reason. And then, if, if, in your mind, you're the main woman, mm-hmm. and then you find out about her, then it's, well, why, why are you messing with her now? So, is monogamy a realistic thing for satisfaction? <laughs> you know, I really, I mean, since you've been here, I really was not going to have the monogamy conversation. That was really not part of it, but since we're here, you know. You're going to get me hung. <laughs> <laughs> They come like, we that's speak, the guy. We could speak theoretically. Shall we move on? Yeah, we might have to. We'll have to come back to that, man. I mean, it's not it's not impossible, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard. I mean, I mean, I'm just speaking, you know, as a, as a man. You know, it's hard because, you know, it depends on the individual. You know, like some people, like we were saying earlier, like some people don't care. It is what it is. But then... If you genuinely really care about the person you with, you don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes you think you're being smart, like, nah, she ain't going to find out. But she might find out. He might find out. And when they find out, then you got to deal with 
that whole situation. And that why does it have to be a secret that's found out? Why can't it be understood or if you realize that you're the type of person that, you know, satisfaction won't come within one person, why just can't you say that I cannot guarantee you monogamy? Because, you know, these are the things that I'm looking for and you know, because it's 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 really unfair to um, <laughs> to expect people to sacrifice entire parts of themselves mm. just for the sake of maintaining a relationship with you. You know what I mean? So to ask someone to say, well, you know what, you know. If you want to be with me, you have to only be with me. And you know what? Even though I cannot fulfill everything that you need, just so I just do it out. Well, <laughs> you, 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 you got to be a special woman to <laughs> think like that because not everybody's ready for that. I mean, there's, I, you know, there's, we've heard of some people that, and then, you know, even certain cultures, you know, but here in America, that's, that's not the culture. The mm -hmm. culture is... Keep one woman, mm -hmm. and this is the culture that we live in now. Nobody can tell you how to live, but if you're married, and then you cheat on your wife, and she's asking for alimony, mm -hmm. you can't ask why because mm -hmm. there's there's mm -hmm. a there's rules to the marriage, right. and you broke a rule. Mm -hmm. So now if you gotta pay, you can't be mad at her. You broke the rule, mm -hmm. you know. And the same for her, she broke the rule. Mm -hmm. So you broke the rule, and if you gotta pay or whatever the 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 consequence is for your decision, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So you got to live with that. But, you know, you're not going to find many women that's going to be, that's going to be okay knowing, like, you hear this a lot. Why don't you just be truthful with me? But every man knows that means that, okay, if I tell you that I'm going to sleep with you, you're going to be like, nope, I'm not, I, I, you ain't getting it if that's all you want. That's mm -hmm. all I want. Now, there's some women that they they, 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 they could be cool with it. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's. that's, you know, the, the start of this, conversation mm -hmm. we talked about what what we're socially conditioned to want mm -hmm. versus what we intimately want mm -hmm. so when we start talking about what this society expects um, from us as far as monogamy and as far as you know marriage and vows and things like that and breaking vows if you step out of that's also as far as what we're socially conditioned and which may not be in a line with what we want intimately and then if we're searching for intimacy we're searching to make these connections with people who you know who understand who we are then wouldn't it be in our best interest to be realistic and honest about that and it's not just you know where it's only for men it's you know for women as well because you know women make huge sacrifices you know to um you know, to be with men and sacrifice certain, you know, parts of herself and do without, you know. And then especially whereas, you know, not to, you know, paint our men in a, in a, in a poor light, but, you know, their social standing with that comes limitations. You know what I mean? Because he's going through his own stuff and, you know, once people are going through their things, it's going to be hard for them to be able to feed you <laughs> right. when they're starving themselves you know what i mean yeah. so it's like you know so now we're in you know these positions where it's like you know we're all coming from a place where there isn't abundance we're coming from a place where it's like of lacking and we're all trying to get and then if everybody's not getting their soul fed and their spirit nurtured because we're sitting here so caught up in what you know, societal expectations are, where does that really leave us? You know what I mean? Worrying about a society that we're really not that much part of anyway. But, you know, and then we're still not getting, you know, our spiritual needs met. So you're not getting your spiritual needs met and you're not getting your social needs met. So where are we as individuals and how satisfied are we in this world trying to navigate it through, you know, with partners that aren't feeding well, our spirit. Do can you agree or do you feel that there's some sort of spiritual awakening to some degree? Not to the degree where you gotta hashtag it on your shirt that you woke, but 
I mean, that there is... Stay woke? I can't hashtag mm -hmm. stay woke? I mean, you know, <laughs> stay woke maybe. Or, well, let's not even stay woke. How about get up? Get the crust out your eye first type of woke, you know? Because I think a lot of them, it's 3 in the morning. And they telling everybody it's noon. Mm -hmm. You're not up yet. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even had breakfast. And you still talking. Or you ain't even learned how to break your fast, but you talking about you woke. So it's a lot going on out here. Mm -hmm. You know? But, um... But there is a, a, a spiritual shaking going on. And I hope it's happening. I just hope that we don't think that it's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it feels like it's something going on. Yeah, I, so, I definitely feel that there is a shift. Well, then, with that being said, I'll see you in like 100 or 200 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, you know, what you looking for, that's not, that's not 2020. You know what I mean? And I don't mean, I, I mean the year. Like, you know, that 20 or 2021, whatever. Now, I'm still too far ahead. I'm still way too far ahead. I mean, your, your outlook is great. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't think we, we're, we're not there yet. You know, mm -hmm. the, the mass of our, of our culture still is, is caught up in what they see and, and what people think and, you know, they, they're not even comfortable. We, we, you know, our women just starting to wear their hair naturally. But is it a fad? Mm -hmm. Or do are they actually comfortable wearing their hair like mm -hmm. that? I've heard some stories of crying when they cut that, when they took that perm out. Mm -hmm. Or the changing over. Like, I, just, I can't do it. And, and, and then many that but just it does went affect, back. It does, yeah. it, it does affect your vanity. I know my transition, you know, I realize I'm a lot more vain than I thought I am. <laughs> I, I didn't do the big chop. Right, yeah. <laughs> I didn't do the big. I did it little by little. Right. I wore my weaves and my extensions, mm -hmm. and I just cut slowly but surely. You know, I'm like I'm a lot more vain than I thought. I need to work on that. Right. <laughs> you know? But and 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 you probably learned for yourself that is something. And you know what was important in that is that you at least saw that there was something in you that you still need to work mm -hmm. on. You know, as opposed to feeling like a lot of people, I think they they think they good like. Like, you know, ain't, I don't need to change nothing, I'm fine. You know, like, where I'm at, I'm good. Like, well, what, what I need to change about me? <laughs> you know what I mean? But we all need, we all growing. I don't know. It's like, you know, should our goals be to have a relationship that's on the, a great relationship that's on the physical plane? Because my ultimate goal is to have a relationship that transcends the physical plane and that my partner and I connect on a spiritual level that does not exist on this realm. Is that too hippie-like? No, it's not. I mean, it, it, you know, the viewers might, they probably like, yeah, she is something before she started, but I mean, I get it, but it starts on the physical plane, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It don't, I don't want to say it doesn't start, like, it doesn't start deep, like, like we might end up back at the soulmate thing, like, you might see somebody and then that could be the one, mm -hmm. but there's still some development there, like, you still got to get to that point, and mm -hmm. it starts physically, like, like, that's how we know each other, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're not right. in the womb, your mother womb, and then your, your soulmate is over there, and you like, I'm, I'm gonna see you in, in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's physical. We gotta come out. We gotta learn some things. We gotta we gotta learn how to function, school, and everything else. You you interact with other boys and other girls, and and you 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 learn what it is about you that you like. Mm -hmm. Like I think we mentioned it earlier. Like it's so hard to be trying to to grow with somebody else when you don't even really know you. Mm -hmm. You know, you still trying to figure you out. Mm -hmm. and But it's unfortunate because then it's like, well, how long I got to wait for this dude to figure himself out, man? Yeah, you yeah. Know? And it's taking, especially when they're not even invested in learning themselves, you know, and that's the thing. A lot of people are running from doing that level of work. It takes a lot. Well, hell, they've been working on whatever they've been working on for a long time. Mm -hmm. So... You know, like, all right, perfect example. Dude just did 15 years. He come home and he wants, now his woman want him to invest his time in being emotional and being, and like, yo, I just got out of jail. <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. Let me, give me some time. I was already bonded. I'm not trying to bond right now, except another way. Just let me, give me a minute. You mm -hmm. know, I got, I'm, I'm trying to understand the world first. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that's already out here. They just, they don't, 
they they they're not looking for that. You know, it's a lot of us not look like like what percentage of our culture would you like to have start moving in that direction? Because they're all not gonna come. As much as possible. I mean, what I mean. <sighs> So uh, you really think that we're doomed? That it, it, it has nothing to do with being doomed. I just said it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's not going to... You doing great work. And the best part about, like, the internet and everything else is that it touches all parts of the planet. So mm -hmm. there might be somebody else out here that feels the same way you feel. Mm -hmm. At least now they'll see it and they know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. That's what's great about the internet. You you kind of learn, like, like, you were just talking about connecting physically but mm -hmm. that person might not be able to get to you they in texas mm -hmm. but they see you on on a on a platform and they like yes that's what i'm talking about somebody get i'm not alone mm -hmm. you know and right. and that makes a big difference you know what i'm saying so i'm not saying we we're not doomed we can't be doomed okay. you know what i mean if we was doomed it would have all been over right. you know what i mean so Absolutely. there's no we're not doomed it's just a very slow process and it's going to take some time we may not even see a, a a a small percentage of our people moving in the direction that that you're talking about in your lifetime but you do the best you can that's why we have kids we cultivate them mm -hmm. to kind of do the things that we're looking for and then we hope that they take off to become become good individuals good people they they um in society, they become good contributors to society, and they do their best. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, what else? More, what more can we ask for? You know what I'm saying? We, we. How about this? We could not be here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying we could not be here, but we here. So enjoy what we can and do the best that you can. Cause <laughs> that that day, mommy and daddy could have not met. You know what I'm saying? But we here. It's so many that, and then, you know, it's so many of us that ended up someplace else. So we here, do the best we can, and everything will unfold. Just, do, they always say, do your work. You doing your work. Yes. Do your work. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, man. We gonna all, all we can do is what we can do. Yeah. And we can't, a lot of us ain't ready for that, man. They, they don't even want to hear them conversations. It's we know there's a lot of different organizations out here, right? Mm -hmm. I remember um, years ago, like I, I used to be a part of the um, Nations of Gods and Earths. And we mm -hmm. um, we used to have rallies in the park at Fort Greene Park the, the, the last, I think it's the last Sunday of the month. And um, the women used to come with their hair wrapped and then they would have on their garbs and we called it three quarter because they wrapped up three quarters of their body because the earth is wrapped up in three quarters of water mm -hmm. and they tied up the other quarter, which is the land, mm -hmm. right? And I seen two young sisters come by, me and some of my brothers was talking and then they was just like, I would never, nobody could ever put me in nothing like that. I was like, damn, is that serious? I think they just got on clothes, but there's a significance to it. So I was like, Maybe she don't understand, but sometimes it ain't even about understanding. Like, you, you just shut that down. Like, I'm not trying to hear it. That's not for me. And it is what it is. You know, and I'm, culturally it was beautiful, but it's just not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even when the Muslims meet, all the women dressed in white, the nation of Islam, all the women on one side, they dressed up, the men are dressed up, it looks great, but it's just not for everybody. You know, they don't want to be a part of that, you know? Do you think it's because to um, to go into each of these different school of thoughts requires a certain amount of discipline Definitely. and that, and they just don't want to do the work because it requires way too much discipline and responsibility and that's exactly what they're running away from. It takes a lot to once you you learn who you are, there's a responsibility there and not everybody's ready for it. Sometimes once people get it, they run away from it because it's just it's too much. Mm -hmm. And they just figure, somebody told me today, yo, you only a man. And I was like, damn, I'm only a man now. I told you, I just, I was a part of the nations of gods and earths and they, we was we was teaching that we gods. <laughs> he told me I'm only a man. I'm like, yeah, I'm only a man? I thought I was God. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's different, but as you grow, 
into different walks of life and different schools of thought, you know, there's different ways of looking at that, you know, because at the end of the day, he wasn't wrong. I'm human. I'm a man. You know what I mean? But then, you know, mentally, I see myself someplace else. And um, I think you become a God when you're willing to accept that responsibility. That's when we become the gods and the goddesses that we're looking for. But everybody's not ready to take that step. That don't make them bad people. It's just like, it's that free will that we learned about when we all came up in, if we came up in Christian writing, you know, that that God gave you the free will to do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? So then I always say, well, didn't that make Adam and Eve wrong for deciding to take the apple when you was given? But they was like, but he told him not to do that. Then I said, it's unfair. That's mm -hmm. not, then it ain't free will then. It's free will, but. So then it's not free will. It's, it's free will with an exception. So there was so if the big man gave us a rule in the beginning, then everything got a rule. Then. Right. You know what I mean? But once we start to learn that um, that we're more than just men and we're more than just women, that we're the God aspect of us is the spiritual aspect, and we you know we learn from the you know the ancient comedic teacher that we're all we have different divine aspects of ourselves and that's the God within us you know so once we start to make those connections that no we're not the, the, the man and the woman is just a physical body but within you you have the different divine principles and that's what we are supposed to be manifesting those divine principles that we all have within us you know and then once we start to you know get those connections then it won't be so you know, difficult to say, I'm not going to be that, or, you know, start labeling people as hoteps and, you know, <laughs> those other, you know, slurs that we, you know, use to call people. And it's just like, no, that's, that's all within you, you know, and you live those principles every day. You may not be strict with it, mm -hmm. but we all, you know, live by certain principles and we all have certain values and that's it. And we all reflect it. And that, you know, you know, which... You know, kind of leads me back to the whole, you know, monogamy thing. When we find out that, you know, the the certain feminine principle and masculine principle, and that we all have these different, you know, energies and masculine and feminine and different principles, that alone has us connecting to multiple partners right. because different aspects of us are going to connect to different aspects of other people's. And you know, and that's and that's how it was, you know. So there, there was no stigma because you know, you know, uh, you have different feminine aspects that connect to different uh, masculine aspects. So it's like now we come here, and then if a woman is connecting to more than one man, you know, she has this stigma attached to her, and vice versa. You know, if a man connects to you know more than one woman, you know, and it's like oh. Well, you know, oh, he, he's this or he's that. But ultimately, you know, in our divinity, this is what's going to happen. The closer we connect to our divinity, that's what's going to happen. You know? A lot of us are afraid. We're just afraid to lose something. You know, we're always afraid that we're going to lose something. And then you feel like you work so hard to get this, whether it's the individual or just the relationship itself, the way you want it. You don't want somebody else to just come in and take it from you. But you don't, you don't even know that maybe in the work that y'all was doing that maybe for y'all it was incomplete. Mm -hmm. You know, you it, on your side it might have been might have been good work, but it still might have been an incompletion on the on your spouse's side, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, it's it's still hard, man. You know, we we just trying to do the best we can out here. Especially, especially in these relationships, man, because, you know, I mean, just besides relationships, you know, like we were saying earlier, man, a lot of the stuff that we just went through individually in our, in, in our homes or whatever, and, and it's just so much, man. Like, you know, we, this is nice because it's almost like therapy because a lot of us need it. Man. Yeah. You know, yeah. we need a lot of therapy out there. Just, or even just somebody to talk to, man. You know, uh, back in the day, they used to, Jay, Jay would say something, Jay Z would say something like, yo, 
um, since the thugs, y'all all need hugs. And then, you know, for a few of the dudes who respond, I don't need no hugs. <laughs> like, like, I ain't sensitive, but being a thug is, is some gangsterism to it. Like, I'm good. I don't need you. I don't need, I don't need that emotion. I'm, I'm good over here. Mm -hmm. So... Well, you know, there's some, there's healing hugs. And yeah. we can all use a good healing hug, heart to heart, and, you know, get those rhythms in sync and, you know, and... I'm saying and, dudes are growing now. They <laughs> tell me they don't love the hug. They don't love to hug their kids. I know I love to hug mine, you know. Hey, like you said, man, it's, it's therapy and hugs, man. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, there's a whole science behind you know the hugging and the cuddling and you know and just you know there's a it's a, 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 a tremendous amount of healing that goes in hormones that get released when you get hugged and you know it's, uh, we turn, and peace and we it's turn peace. the physicalness into something it's ratchet so you know until we kind of wash that out and that's going to take a lot of time because even when we don't know it, it's being thrown at us. And our own culture's being thrown at us, you know? When we ain't really have much of a culture on TV, it was being thrown at us. Now, everything on TV looks like us, and then they got us emerged in it now. So, you know, it's, it's, the best thing is the worst part of us, mm -hmm. you know? That's what the world sees. And they think that, that, that that's what's great about us, and it's mm -hmm. not even that. It's not that great, you know? It's, it, it, it's not much of anything. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, eventually, like I said, it'll take time, you know, because every, that's what we wanted, right? We wanted, we wanted equality with everything. We wanted to be seen. We wanted Europeans and white people to see us. So now they see us, you know, but y'all don't understand that y'all was already, y'all was being prepared. Mm -hmm. So now the world sees you differently. 